Welcome everyone and thank you so much for joining us in our third year series for financial literacy. My name is Charla Montgomery. I'm the program director. Um, I'd like to introduce my esteemed colleagues. We have Simone Stokes, administrative assistant for OCUR. Um, then of course our guest speaker and instructor, Jasper Smith. Also Jasper is a professional uh, financial planner and author of the Build Wealth Challenge. And we'll talk a little bit more about how that can affect you a little bit later. Um, for now, Simone, would you mind going through the announcements? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so to start off for the $150 mini grant stimulus, we're gonna have you fill out, in order to be considered for it, you need to fill out our, one of our forms, which will be sent out later on in the series. Um, it'll be issued to everyone. As long as you attend all four sessions, you will be eligible for this in addition to other criteria. Three participants will be randomly chosen each session to receive a free copy of Jasper, Jasper's Build Wealth book at the end of each session. And our fourth and final session will be a Q&A with Patelco Bankers and an investment consultant. And before we move on, Charla, would you like to talk a little bit more about the grant as well as the uh, book? Sure. Sure, sure. Um, just to give you a little more detail on how the uh, mini grant stimulus works, uh, we are going to be we are going to offer up to fifteen participants um, the uh, chance to uh, win the one hundred and fifty dollars stimulus grant. And essentially, uh, and there is going to be certain criteria which we will also share with you later in the program. Um, but the number one thing is you'll have to be unbanked or underbanked. And what I mean by underbanked is no more than a checking account. So no savings account, no emergency funds, no investing of any kind. Um, and um, we'll, uh, uh, it'll be a random uh, process for determining those, those winners, but we will have to have you complete a, an interest form just to make sure that we're considering the people that care about it. Uh, and then also make sure that you understand the criteria. Um, also, um, on the um, Jasper's book, The Build Wealth Challenge, uh, three participants each night will be randomly selected to win one of the books. And um, we will do that, um, probably announce those winners in tomorrow's session. So uh, please make sure you're here. You have to you have to be in attendance in order to win. So um, yeah, please make sure you come to all sessions and um, never know, you might get one of those free books and they're great to have. So without further ado, uh, we will start with Jasper <clears throat> to go over the program and to start the training. And my, my bad, Charles, I didn't scroll through here. Simone, did you want to say anything about the Zoom, the Zoom etiquette rules or? Oh, you're on mute. Sorry about that. If possible, could you guys all uh, change your names on the screen to match your first and last name? This just makes it easier for us when we're addressing each other. In addition to that, try to keep yourself muted when you're not talking. And then also be very mindful of the language you're using, whether you're talking out loud or in the chat. Uh, we just want to be respectful of everyone and try to avoid any uh, inappropriate language. Thank you. Appreciate it, Simone. Yeah, we we giving that disclaimer, y'all. This, this is our this is our third try at this, and uh, <laughs> we've, had, we've had some good times on the series. And so, uh, I would say, kind of before we hop into things, I uh, just want to thank everybody for just showing up. This was, I believe, we had a was it a record of uh, reg registrations that happened this time around. I think we were somewhere in the eighties, and I, I know that's a new record for us. And so. I guess it's because we keep doing it that people just keep hearing about it and showing up. Uh, we hope we to we hope we can get more registrations and more people right, actually yeah. show up to the actual sessions. I think that there's so much more that can be gained from like being here live versus you know seeing a snippet of it or hearing about it from a friend. Right. And so we want to you know make sure that mm -hmm. as we share you know the this information that we share some of these these, these clips from the, the actual sessions that it will encourage people to actually show up. And so I just want to, again, thank you all for, for being present tonight. And, uh, you know, you you all are in for a treat. It, 
simply because I, I get three nights with you. So <laughs> I'm, I know in the past we've done kind of a six parts. So we kind of stretched out a little bit more. So we'll still get through all the material. Oops. I, I'm sorry, Simone. I'm sitting here going through. <laughs> Hello. I'm not sure how to put my name on there. Or do I need to? No. Um, I can message you privately. It's okay. I'll help you figure it out. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Really quick plug. There's the occur team. <laughs> two of the four, two of them are on here with us tonight. And I'll keep on moving through. And then there's me. So again, I'll be a facilitator for the first three nights. And so looking forward to having this discussion with you all. And I say a discussion because it's gonna get fun. So it's not gonna be just like a lecture where I talk the whole time and you know you just sit back and listen. I mean, I do want you to listen and take and take advantage of the information, but also want to uh, make sure we stay engaged. It's just these sessions go a lot smoother when uh, people will share, you know, ask questions, comment. I always say this is a safe space, so let's let's act like we family. Just you know, we're gonna keep it real. I'll be open and transparent about things, but also hopefully, hopefully, you're comfortable enough to share some things you don't have to share. Whether it's you know taking yourself off mute and chiming in, or if you want to leverage the chat. But it, these sessions go so much better when we have a lot of engagement. And so we'll try to um, infuse some different points in the program where we'll kind of ask some questions of you kind of before, after, even during. So don't feel like you need to wait until the very end to ask your question. If there's something you that you're really itching to do, you know, go ahead and, and let us know. And even if you don't want to address it right away, you can say, hey, for the Q&A, just make sure you at least get it out your brain. But write it down. Throw it in the chat, and we can definitely uh, revisit that during uh, the Q and A. Um, and I, I, I guess I'll say, actually, I transition here to my slide deck. Uh, I just want to say thank you all for registering and giving us a little bit more information about kind of where you are in your journey and what you're looking to accomplish. So again, this is just night number one. So for for those of you that um, have never sat through an occur financial literacy program. Uh, these these are fun. I mean, I, I enjoy them. I, I know we get people who have sat through the entire series a couple when we first started. Um, some have sat through one. Uh, some have, you know, maybe they weren't able to make the, the previous session. And so you're here again tonight. So I want to welcome anybody who uh, this is your second time around of, of sitting through the program. Thank you. Uh, what, you'll, what you'll know if you are somebody who has uh, spent some time with us in the past, the information itself hasn't changed. I mean, that's the fun part about these sessions is that I don't have to recreate the wheel. We, we, we know that there are just certain things that tend to work. And it's just a matter of, is this the right time for you to really kind of make that change? And so before I even hop in, actually, Simone, I was going to ask, can we go ahead and uh, kick off the, that initial poll for tonight just to kind of you know, get, get things moving? <clears throat> Um, I think since I'm, since I'm a co-host, I don't have access to do it, but do you, do you see it on your screen or no for to launch a poll? I'm going to make you a full co-host. Let's see if I can launch it. Um, All right. We're good. Yes. <laughs> it's called, it's called the pre, pre poll to 2023. Oops. Oops. All right. All right. Pre-poll 20, okay, got it. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, so take a few moments. I think we got three questions for you all tonight. Just take a moment and yeah, go ahead and uh, let's dive into these poll questions. Did you launch it? Uh, yes, can you all not see it? Mm -mm. I saw it briefly, then it went away. Okay, I still have it active. Hold on. Mine is launched. Mine is launched and up. Okay. Yeah, and I'm able to navigate it and use it. So I'm not sure what's going on with everyone else. Okay. But but it is up. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it's still showing it's up on mine. So I have it. Yeah. In the old account. Yeah. So the it, it's definitely up. up. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. <clears throat> so if you only answer two out of the three. 
Is that okay? Because the second question doesn't apply. I like budgeting and I do it well, but that doesn't have anything to do with the issue. Uh, is it, None of those apply to me. <laughs> That's fine. It ain't challenging. <laughs> And I almost put an answer choice. I like budget. There's always at least one, and you are the one. So that that's totally today. Fine. <laughs> Tomorrow it may change. But today I'm it. Not a problem. <laughs> problem. <laughs> I'm trying to submit it, and it won't submit. And if you have to just hit one, just put all of the above for number two. Since you do like budgeting, you just put all of the above. I think it might. Oh, okay. Be yeah, that's what happened. Okay. If you don't answer all three questions, it won't. It won't light up the submit button. All right. So I'm gonna give about another about 30 seconds. We got yeah almost 70% of everybody's done it. So yeah we'll give, we'll give another another few moments here. <clears throat> Knock out the poll. Yeah. All right. This is good stuff. We're gonna have a good talk tonight. <laughs> so good. This is good. This is good. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and end the poll. We got, you know, we got about yeah, about seventy percent uh, completed this. So I'm gonna go ahead and end it, and and I'll share the results with everybody, so you all can kind of see. So the first question was, do you believe you're capable of doing better? Uh, thank you, everybody, for saying yes because that is, <laughs> believe it or not, it's such a simple question. But as we're talking about money mindset and management tonight, like if you don't believe, there's nothing I'm going to say or do that's going to help you because it's got to come from within you. I mean, I've had too many people who have sat through a number of uh, financial literacy programs, but it wasn't the right time. Uh, so I, I wanted to really kind of start off the session by asking that question of the group. So the fact that everybody said, yes, we can do some things tonight, right? So you all believe that you're capable. And just with that belief alone, we, we can we, we can really, we can move forward on some things. So number two, uh, aside, aside from our, our one outlier, <laughs> so budgeting is a challenge for me because, um, and, and I wanted to kind of get a, an idea of, like budgeting is one of these things that just people, <laughs> nobody likes doing them. And, and so it, it tends to be a challenge, but, you know, we can get past it. We got to believe though, right? If we believe we can get past it, we can get past it. So, yeah, there's always somebody who doesn't like budgeting. You know, I'm not a big fan of it, but it's, it's necessary. Uh, the budgeting strategy, we'll talk about a couple of different ones that you, you might want to try out on your own. Uh, staying committed is a big one. So there may be some people on here who have attempted a few different types of budget or, you know, you sat in a session years ago and they were like, hey, do this budget and just, it didn't work out. And that's okay. Like staying committed is, is a challenge. And some of you may have said, you know, <laughs> All of these are my challenges with budgeting. And we'll kind of talk <laughs> through some of them as, as to the why budgeting is the challenge for, for most people. And then this last one is just some, some different strategies that uh, I'll touch on briefly during the session tonight. But there are, again, different strategies that are out there, but it's really about trying to find the one that, that suits you best. <clears throat> All right. All right. So I'll close this down and give me a moment here while I transition over to my deck. And uh, let's see here. Oops. All right, so everybody should be able to see my logo. Let me know if that came up all right. I think we should be mm -hmm. okay. All right, so. Tonight's night one with me. I have two more nights with you all. Hopefully everybody will stick around for the other two with at least me. <laughs> but, you know, my goals for these sessions is fairly simple and it's to change the way you think and feel about money in order for you to achieve financial peace of mind. I don't know what financial peace of mind means to you. It's going to be different for everybody on this session tonight. But my goal is to change when we think about these things and, and try to unpack some of the emotions and, and feelings that are connected to money. And so I know those are two big things, right? And, and so I, I try my best 
to address them the best I can. But if I can just change one of those or both of those, we can really make some headway. So no matter where you are in life, and I know we've got in, in uh, a wide variety of people who register for the session who are also in attendance tonight. And so just know no matter where you are, maybe we could think about things a little different. Maybe there's things that we just haven't unpacked from the emotional side of the house that are still kind of holding us back. But whatever it is, let's try. Let's try to bust through those things. And again, if you, if you got something that's just, again, on your mind and you want to kind of talk about it live, and you know, during the session tonight, feel free to just let, let me know. I'm, I'm always open uh, to have that conversation. And so we're going to start with mindset. We'll talk about money management on the second half of, of the effort. And just know I'm going to do my best to be watching the clock and we'll try to wrap things up. Uh, by seven or a little bit after, and then we'll open up the Q&A uh, and then we'll kind of go from there. So <clears throat> when I think of mindset, I think of this image and I think about the gentleman up top who, well, I'll take it back. Both of these guys got the same email that said there are some diamonds <laughs> in, in, in at this location. <laughs> so my man on the bottom, he was he was getting busy. And he got close, but he didn't know how close he was. Mm. So he gave up. Now the guy up top got the same email, and he's a little bit he's a little bit behind the guy on the bottom, but he looks he looks quite eager to find those diamonds. And I think this image is very indicative of kind of what happens in life for, for us sometimes, where we just feel like it's not working. I've been there before. I'm just like, why should I keep going? You just never know what you're going to find with the next strike of that pick, right? He does, He didn't know that he, have he just, if he just had one more in him, if somebody could say, man, you got to believe, because I don't, I don't, I think he answered no to the belief question. If we, if we gave him that poll, but your mindset is where this thing starts up here. And I know a lot of financial people talk about it all the time, but we got to keep reminding everybody that's just, it's just how you process some of this stuff. Again, we're not, necessarily looking always for like these, these perfect scenarios, but if we believe that we can do better and start to chart out a path to do better, think good things will happen. That's normally how it works. But for some of us, we just, you know, we, we need to kind of think about how do I process like money related decisions? And so I like to kind of go through there's five of these money personalities. And for a lot of us, we might not have thought much about this, or maybe we know this about ourselves already, but I love kind of going through these five personalities because I think at one point in my life, I've been all five. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I'm just keeping it real with y'all. Like we going to, you're going to go through seasons in your life. And so but can you acknowledge where you are? So I'm gonna hop right in. The first one is the denier. Like this guy knows what time this bus leaves, but yet he thinks the bus is gonna wait for him. Mm -hmm. You know, a denier is that, that, you know, that's my procrastinator. Anybody in here procrastinate and you don't have to answer out loud, but just, just know, have you ever procrastinated on something? Yeah. I have to. <laughs> Most of us have, right? We, you know, I did it today. I, I had some stuff that was due today. I got it done, but it was a rough day for me. But it, I didn't. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't wait. And so, with my deniers, we'll, we'll tell ourselves, well, "I'm gonna get my financial house in order later." I hear that a lot. Or, I'm gonna do it later. I'm gonna get to it later. I'm. A, I'm a, <laughs> a lot of people. I'm gonna holler at you later. I'm a, okay. Later comes, and I don't hear from these people. So what we've got to do, if, if I'm the procrastinator, I've got to figure out some simple things that I can do to help me avoid procrastinating. And when we're talking about, you know, our mindset with, with money, maybe I've got to automate some things. Maybe if I can just take it off my to-do list, and I know we all have an extended to-do list, if I can take it off that list and maybe automate some things, then... I'm, maybe it's saving, right? I'm saving automatically, but I'm not thinking about it. I just set it up and it gets done. My strugglers. 
So this is the, <laughs> this is this. They, they describe these, you know, the strugglers as the, I'm living check to check. I'm always in crisis mode or, you know, mm-hmm. I get out of a crisis and I find myself back in one. And it's just this never ending struggle, right? I mean, the image here is very indicative of <laughs> this person here pushing this rock up the hill. It's a chance. It can get done. But there are better ways, right? So when we think about the struggler, the person who's been in crisis, a lot of good can come from you being in a in a situation. If if you learned from that experience, hmm. I've, I've lived check to check before. I've gotten fired before. I've not had the money I wanted or deserved, and you start you start thinking a little bit different. Mm-hmm. But what happens? Well, what I hope happens is you just turn it around and you remember those feelings and almost make a commitment to yourself to never feel that way. Mm -hmm. It's easy to blame everybody and the environment and your family and your kids. It's easy to point the finger. The hardest thing to do is to point that finger in the mirror. I'm getting too real for y'all. Let me know. But I I just, I've I've heard too many stories and I'm just like, okay, things going to happen in life, but how do we get past that? Like we, I know how I felt when I didn't have a job one time and I was kind of just mad at myself. I know I did some things <laughs> to cause my situation, but I was like, I never want to feel this way again. And I literally, in the snap of a finger, I just started changing the way I moved in life. So for my strugglers, again, all y'all said y'all believe, I believe we can get past this. My impulses. Oh man, this Ooh, this is a real story. Um, I almost bought some tickets to and my friends to game one of the uh, NBA playoffs. The uh, Golden State Warriors were playing in Sacramento. And me and the fellas were just, and them prices for nosebleed tickets were not cheap. Nope. We did not go, y'all. But I was tempted. Like, I was like, if everybody would have said yes and everybody was available to go on that Saturday for the game, we would have done it. I mean, I think the cheapest tickets we saw were like $700. And I'm like, we still got to get to Sacramento. We probably going to eat. Need some... <laughs> so, so, I'm human. I, I, luckily, again, we didn't, we didn't do it. But it happens. It's just impulse. Like, I laugh, but the, the image here is just like, if you're the person in the grocery store that doesn't make the list, that might be how your cart ends up. Because you get extra stuff that you may not have needed today. Still stuff that might have been useful, but, you know, I I joke, but I've tried the whole go to the grocery store hungry and I got trapped in the frozen food aisle. And I was like, no matter if I bake it, saute it, grill it, it won't going to look like the box, but I was hungry. So so (laughs) that that, that impulse happens. And and so just it's, are you aware of this from my impulses? Are you aware? Are you aware that when you're having a bad day, you go, maybe it's shopping, maybe you go out to eat, maybe you go have an adult beverage. Like everybody maybe maybe has their, their thing, but are you aware of it is, is what I want you to ask yourself for my impulses. I was aware that it was going to be expensive to go to the game. And I was thinking like, I probably shouldn't go. But it was a great game, y'all. I mean, I wish I was there, but I still enjoyed watching it. So I, I think it's, for my impulses, it's what can I do to distract me from, from making this purchase? That's the game you got to play with yourself mentally, or you got to have somebody to hold you accountable. So if, if you're the impulse shopper, it's let me wait 24 to 48 hours. And if I feel the exact same way about whatever it is I'm going to buy, maybe you should just go do it. If the impulse is that strong, but usually, because I know we're all busy people, you're not going to feel this, the not the exact same way you felt when the impulse maybe had shown up. Mm-hmm. My cautious savers. I like these people. They're, they're great. You know why? Because they save. However, common, sometimes we don't take enough risk. You're not going to save your way to getting wealthy or getting rich. And I know we got a session on investments on when I have you off for day three. 
but my cautious savers, while I'm I'm happy that you've built in the practice of saving money, it's now how do I leverage and maximize those savings? Because playing it too safe, you'll lose out, right? Purchasing power of the dollar, you know, inflation. Mm -hmm. So I, I love the fact that you save, but you maybe hinder your growth because you're just a little too afraid to, to take a little risk. And I know risk gets a, a bad, you know, it's kind of a negative connotation around the word risk, but risk is good, right? For anybody on here who's, who's in a relationship, you took a risk <laughs> by pursuing this person, or if you were pursued, there's risk in maybe your job or your career. If you tell you, you know, your, your, your manager that you would like to earn more money. There's a risk in that, right? So we take risk all the time, every day. But sometimes with our money, we tend to want to hold on a little too tightly. And that sometimes <laughs> is not always in our best interest. So for my cost of savers, it's okay to loosen up a little bit, just a little bit. Take, we'll take baby steps. And then my last people are the planners. And these people are great. I mean, they they think through the process. They they may do some things and, and a lot of research and homework and, and attend sessions like this. But the the planners, despite like having a process and doing the research and the homework and, and getting the education, sometimes the planners don't execute. Hmm. So may so I like to use this in the investment session, but. Sometimes we just get too much information, which hinders us from making a decision. So you'll sit through my session. You'll be another session next week, week after that, two months from now. It'll be kind of mostly the same information, but it's like, what have we done with the information? So my planners are great because they do a lot of the work. They have the process that they're driven to, to do better, but we got to execute, y'all. Got to execute. So my planners, again, they might do a lot of the, the initial work that some people aren't willing to do but they don't execute. So how good was all the homework and research that you did? And I'd just like to speak from experience for, on this one is that I have uh, quite a few clients who, they are more of the do-it-yourselfers. And so they don't need me for everything as, as their financial planner. But I like to ask like, hey, where, where is it that you do need some assistance? And what I hear a lot is I'll figure it out. But then when I follow up, they haven't figured it out. <laughs> so... I, I'm telling you, the stuff that people tell me, I'm like, do if y'all can only hear what y'all tell me, y'all will get a kick out of this. Because it's, 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 it's laughable, but it's also just the truth and the reality of human nature. Just, it's just human behavior. I mean, I'm obsessed with like the why behind some of these things as to why we do things or, you know, why can't we uh, see what we did? I, I guess because you're, you know, what? I guess because you're living in it. And I think it's always good to reflect. But I think when we're in it, we just we everybody have those blinders. So that's why I love these sessions because because again maybe there's something I'll say that will resonate. You're like ah, that's why I sat through these sessions. And maybe just one thing you all get out of these these sessions with myself, uh, even on, on day four. But as, as we think about these different personalities, and I'll do the recap here just for everybody and, and for the recording. But you have your deniers, you have your strugglers, you have your impulsives. You have your cautious savers, and you'll see here on the screen, we have number five, which are the planners. And again, I've already confessed that I've been all five of those. I was almost <laughs> impulsive uh, about a week ago. I'm cautious sometimes with my money. I'm always planning, but I too sometimes don't execute. You know, I procrastinate. I've been on the struggle bus <laughs> a few times. I don't like it. So I always say, you know, if I can avoid this, what can Jasper do on his own? to maybe help him address these, these issues, but is Jasper willing to get the help and or assistance because Jasper is just one person. He cannot do it all. And so I would challenge all of you to think about why haven't you allowed somebody to help you? Or maybe help showed up and you just didn't follow through. But like, start thinking about that, right? Why, why didn't you do it? This is my third time doing Occur. I've had a lot, quite a few people who have never made it, but they saw maybe some of the marketing that occurred in myself that, that we've done. And I would always ask, like, why didn't you come? Oh, you know, I got busy. Uh, you know, so, you know, people register and don't come. I'm like, 
<laughs> thanks for registering, but it would be nice if if we had, uh, you know, we doubled the number of people who showed up. But again, you know, we do our part and, and hopefully people get enough value to go tell a friend and then they tell a friend and then, you know, we get that that count up and we get attendance up in these sessions. Mm-hmm. So I'll pause here for a second to take a quick breather. Uh, any questions, comments, thoughts, concerns, and, and I'll, I'll kind of do this throughout my sessions of just taking a pause break and just, I like to do check-ins and make sure everybody's with me. Uh, somebody's probably eating dinner right now. Somebody's probably on their phone texting. But as long as your ears are open, I'm good. As long as your ears are open. <laughs> I had a question, if I can add it. Yes, ma'am. Right. Yes, ma'am. Um, what do you do if you have a low-paying or part-time position and um, you only have like one or two small streams of income that always seem to have shorter terms of monthly life than the length of the month. Yeah, yeah. And I've been in financial planning and financial management sessions before, and nobody seems to be able to answer that question. Also, that question is not, um, doesn't seem to be set up to help folks who are on government um subsistence and things like that. I mean, I know that you can suggest to people that they put 10% away in their little piggy bank or whatever of what they're living on. But when you have a culture that keeps raising the prices, you know, every other month, and then the inflation goes up, and then the Fed just, I think they just dropped the interest rate last week, if I'm if I remember what I read. Um, so inflation is bouncing around in such a way that it's not helping people save because you really don't have the stretch or the elasticity to choose what you buy unless you know how to change your diet and you've got at least a strip of land that you can put some some onions and some beans and some carrots <laughs> on. No, I'm literally serious, man. I, I love, you I know, love. I love. I, I love. looked at the price of shallots the other day, man. They're almost six dollars a pound. Yeah, so you know, so, what shallot is a shallot is that onion kind of thing that that's supposed to be alkaline and healthier than garlic, but I doubt it. But anyway, yeah, it's, no, so I'll tell I you. Just, that's a question I, I've always wanted to ask, and I never had the nerve. So today I'm having the nerve. I like, it, and I'm, I appreciate you. Ask, so I'll give you the real answer, and, and this is and to your point. I've also seen people not answer this question directly, mm-hmm. and I think it primarily stems from and. I, I'm not certain, but again, I think some presenters represent organizations and they got to be very mindful of what they say. Oh, I see. And I think that's where we get some of this. I know what they probably wanted to say, but they couldn't say it on that platform. So uh-huh. and the bill of movement is me. <laughs> that's all <laughs> I got to report to me. So the reality is, all right, low paying, low income, if I'm on assistance, I've got to, I've got two issues that I've got to work on. Mm -hmm. It's clear that I have an income problem. Mm -hmm. So can I, or am I focused on earning? They're not going to attack that in a financial literacy program. They'll tell you how to do a budget, but you're like, I don't really know. I don't have enough. Well, first (laughs) let's go through that activity and see what you actually have because people will say they don't have enough, but yet will not go through the activity. And I know this from experience having done Okay. Two and a half years at Operation Hope, dealing with the market or the the communities that you're talking about, mm-hmm. I would just ask, you got to show me, because I, I, everybody talks about what they don't have, but if you show me what you do have, that's going to help me to better serve you, and that's what I would do for a lot of my coaching clients. I would just say, show me, mm-hmm. and I had a young lady who was was on government public assistance, but we right. were working on cleaning up her credit. We couldn't do a lot, I'll be honest, but we made some headway. It wasn't everything, but I said, we can't do everything because you have an income problem. And, and, and she was, she was able-bodied, no major disabilities that were going to prohibit her from earning more. And mm-hmm. so I said to her, I'm not the, 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 the career coach. I'm not the career counselor. <laughs> and so and she, and she laughed too. I said, so I understand the issue, but how about we try this? How about we actually try to do some form of a budget? Mm-hmm. 
And I had to get her buy-in because I said, if you don't believe that we can try, I cannot help you. And for a lot of people, honestly, they don't want to do the work. So they'll just keep complaining, moaning, and groaning. And then I'll keep saying, well, I would have helped you had you just called me back, had you, had you been able to be honest with me. And so for this young lady, I got the affirmative. She was willing to go through the process. And I said, so let's try to see what we do have based on your, your lifestyle. And she had three kids. So I was like, okay, we got a good one here. And I said, but let's work on this together. See, the problem with the folks who are, are looking for the free help, they don't show up. And you know how we know this? Because we have 80 people to RSVP and we have, what, maybe 20 people to show up. That's indicative of the individual. Yeah. That's the, and let's not count me, Simone, and Charla. So we got 20. Oh. Okay. So we got 80 people register and 20 show up. Like that is the disconnect that I need to find out the answer as to mm. why did you not come? Now, granted, I know a, a third of that, they may actually, I, I want to say a third. I'll say less than maybe 1% of that group didn't have a real emergency as to why they couldn't come tonight. Even if they just logged in and listened, I'll take that. But right. this isn't in person. I know somebody's cooking dinner, cleaning, like, look. Luckily, my wife got home before we got on because my baby girl would have been right here beside me acting up. And I was like, I was ready for the snacks to say, daddy got to talk at 530. So I, I don't make the excuse. But what I find is it's easy to make the excuse and then continue to tell everybody you're struggling. Mm -hmm. That's what I've seen in my experience of uh, let's call it almost 16 years in financial services. Okay. We will make up. I'm not going to say made up. If you make up a good excuse, that's fine. But we keep making the excuses. I'd rather just talk about the solutions. But are you willing to do the work? We can't even get y'all to show up to a free session. It's free. Free. It's hard. Like I've written a book and I've tried to give my book away for it. They're like, man, I didn't click the link. It's just, it takes two seconds. You got the email. And I would do it while we were on a session and people still wouldn't click. I was like, we've yeah. been on a session another 30 minutes. And I literally, it's just weird to me that when help shows up, for the people who say they need help, want help, want the, the, the I'll say cost-effective or free support, right. they don't meet the provider. I'm not even going to say halfway. Just come like 20, 20%, 30%, percent, and just tell me that you're not going to give me, you're not going to meet me halfway. Because I can respect the person who says, yeah, I ain't going to show up. I got, I got so many issues, but here's what I'm, here's what I'm going to commit to. If I can get the person to say that, oh, we will, mm -hmm. we will do some magical things. Because again, the, the situation is your situation isn't as unique as we all think. Because I think there's millions of people who are going to roughly the same type of issue. Right? I don't have enough money. I live in an area where the cost of living isn't great. I live in a food desert. Mm -hmm. Like we know the issues. So let's acknowledge them. Let's keep working together and let's collaborate. But at what point will we start to show up and execute? That's what I want to spend my time on. Like, that's why I, that's why I love O'Kerr for doing this session. Because we always get a different group of people to show up. I'm like, well, we're going to change a few lives for the ones who show up and for the ones who engage. So I, I appreciate that question. And I know I got a little, a little long winded there, but I'm, I'm watching. The, but but it it, I need to say that stuff for the record so people know that, yeah, I'm not out here just trying to like sell people stuff. I want you to do this work. I know we can do better if we so choose to. So mindset, personality, we're going we're gonna to get into the money management portion of tonight's session. So I put the word on the screen. You know that one person likes doing this. She's already shared with us. <laughs> But for most of us, we feel like this young man who we see here on the screen. Budgeting is important, y'all. It is, it's not fun for most of us. Like, I'm a financial guy. I don't get excited about doing the budget. But it's a very useful tool. Mm -hmm. And I like to kind of share, like, think of the budget, like, like think of a hammer. Like a hammer <clears throat> is useless if it's just laying on a table. If it's in your toolbox, it's, it's useless. But if you pick that hammer up and swing it, oh, you can go build a house. 
You can build a lot of stuff with a hand. But just laying, if it's just laying there, that's what I think about with the budget. Oh, we all know we should do it. <laughs> we all know. But it's how we feel about doing it. <laughs> stuff, right? We, we, we feel, we're a little upset. But here's, here's kind of the why we feel this way. We didn't grow up in a household where we talked about budgeting, like out loud. Like we know parents, grandparents, whoever you grew up with, they, they, you know, the bills were paid. But somebody had, somebody should have talked to you about it because now as an adult, you're like, ooh, I don't talk about money. Well, they didn't talk about it when you grew up. So now you don't feel inclined to have that discussion. So there, there was that, 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 I'm not going to say avoidance. It was just, it just didn't happen for you. We generally, <clears throat> didn't see budgeting as a positive because generally when we saw news about budgeting, it was in relation to our, our governments, whether it was local, whether it was state or federal, they're trying to balance the budget. They don't know what to take out, don't know what to put in. <clears throat> and it's a group of them, a group of people. Mm -hmm. And so you as an individual are like, well, man, all I've seen is groups of people <laughs> who struggle with budgeting and here I am by myself and I, oh, it, it makes sense now. So you, you almost got the, uh, the, the <laughs> you got the confirmation that budgeting is hard because of what you've seen. Anyway, when you think about it. So you've internalized some of that. And then the last one, again, don't take offense before I say it, you know better. <laughs> you just know better, but you're not doing better. So again, we can always blame our family and how we grew up and what we didn't get. We can always look at, you know, other external you know, resources and always, again, look at ourselves internally or look, look ourselves in the mirror. Okay. Somebody needs to. I just muted them. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Yep. Uh, Mute their mic. Yep. So we haven't seen budgeting in this positive light where like budgeting was never fun. Like, again, if you're the accountant type, if you are, I'll say, business minded, if you you know really love numbers, like it's just certain there's a, there's a small group of people who love doing budgets and I'm not one of them. <laughs> so <laughs> and, and, and even even when I talk to people and people who, who are, um, you know, clients of mine who, who have substantial means, like budgeting isn't that hard once you understand that you got to do it in some form of fashion the problem is and, and I, I i'll tell i'll be honest my industry has messed it up for us <clears throat> yeah my industry has told yeah. everybody this is kind of come back to this income thing <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> our industry is my industry has told you that i need you to work on a budget for 30 days for a whole month mm -hmm. meanwhile the majority of us get paid if we get, if we're not on a variable income with businesses, you get paid every two weeks. But the standard is plan for thirty days. But I get paid in these four. I, I think I think of my life in these fourteen day windows. And yet the standard is now nah, stretch it out, add sixteen more days, and let's plan for that. Like don't you, like those are some of the things that I can't change as one guy. I can say them verbally here. We're gonna share some resources with you, but. That budgeting stuff, just the, the math alone of saying I get paid every two weeks, but I got a plan for 30, that is a challenge for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah, Daryl, go ahead, Daryl. I see your hand, Daryl. Go right ahead. I was just going to say, uh, can't people just count 26 checks a year? Whoa, 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 Daryl. No, nope, 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 no. Nope. Okay. <laughs> I understand that, Daryl, but the answer is no. I mean, Yes. No. No. Nope. Well, here's why I said it. Here, here, there's a reason I said it. Here's, here's why. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> if you use two checks a month, on the months where you have three checks, those checks can be the checks that you didn't count on your monthly budget. They just are the ones that roll into your savings or something else. Or, you know, I, I don't know how else a person would do it, but I just think it could work that way as long as you're counting your money on a monthly basis. <laughs> yeah, Daryl, we're making a lot of assumptions that people are counting. And that's, and that's the hard part of budgeting that we, it sounds, that math that Daryl just described sounds very easy to me. 
I, I think a high schooler might even understand where Daryl just explained it. It's basic math. But the math is being, I don't want to say confused. The word I want to say, the math. <clears throat> God, what's the word? I, I want to say like our our human behavior gets in the way of that math. So we know the math is simple as Daryl just described. Right. But in our minds, right, we talk about how we think about money. That's what messes us up. Right. Simple math. Even when people have done budget works, like, well, fill this out for a month, write down your income streams. And again, that was great if you have a stable job. But then they kind of just excluded entrepreneurs who have variable income. So sometimes you have money, you don't. Sometimes you go 30 days to like, so, so again, we have these kind of rules of thumb in our, in our society, mm -hmm. but this is why we struggle y'all because they've tried to standardize <laughs> a lot of, you know, I, I say this a lot in my, <clears throat> my financial planning, like discovery meetings, financial planning is unique to you. So you will never hear me say, this is better than that. Because this could be good for one person and that could be good for the rest of y'all. And, and so the, 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 the thing about budgeting, and this is why I asked one of those poll questions, is we got to find a strategy <clears throat> that's going to work for us. So I know this is how we feel about budgeting. But that's okay. Because we got a whole bunch of different strategies we could try to get past it. And what I'll say before I move on, give yourself a whole lot of grace. Like give yourself so much grace with this whole process of budgeting and money and managing your money. Because once you give yourself some grace, good things are going to happen. <clears throat> so here's a, a, a template that I'll, I'll share with you all. It looks pretty basic. I think we're even going to share. We have a template for this session where, again, it's going to look similar to this. It, it works for some. I've tried this. Didn't work for me. I tried it, though. I failed miserably. It's a simple math. Right now, I have my income, wrote down my bills, and I did a little math at the end. Mm -hmm. So again, in inherently, it does seem simple. You're like, too old not to be able to do this. But it's, again, we have behaviors. We got those emotions. Because even somebody, and I, I, I did this one time in, in a workshop, I handed out something similar to this, and I watched... <laughs> I watched this couple. They just started like, ah. I mean, they I mean, they rolled mm. their eyes. They sat back. They were just like, ah, here he go. We got to do this too. And it's like, but yeah, we got to know this because we were doing like an investment session. I was like, I need to know what you have to play with for investments. Mm -hmm. So it, it is still a beneficial tool if we use it. I just know it's hard to make the commitment to. So <clears throat> try this out, y'all. This works. This probably works better than any budget template I've ever sent out. We, we, we're going to send you all one to everybody who registered. You'll still get one. But I promise you, this, this right here, this works. So it's called the once challenge. And I'm showing a highlighter on purpose because you're going to need a highlighter, a crayon, a marker. But the activity is simple. So whether you use a credit card, you know, multiple credit cards, debit cards. Most people use plastic to make transactions or you might be buying stuff online. So your card is already online. It doesn't matter because there's a record being kept of your spending. Unless you are simply using cash, then I'm gonna need mm -hmm. you to keep receipts. But for most of us, generally speaking, we can check our bank statements, our credit card statements. Mm -hmm. And so what you do is <clears throat> I want you to print out. And yes, I do want you to print. I want you to print out the previous three months of statements. Now we are in April. So we got, well, yeah. So I, this is a good timing of the year because we've, we've passed kind of that holiday season. Again, trying to do it during the holidays. Because you ain't, you ain't who you are <laughs> normally during the other 11 or 12 months out of the year. But we're in a good time frame now. You can look back three months and say to yourself, okay, what did I spend my money on that was a necessity? And then also in the same in the same line, what was it that was not a necessity? So the highlighter comes in where you're going to get that highlighter and everything that was not a necessity to live, you just highlight. Hmm. You do that three months back. Then you take the second pile, you do the same activity. What, what did I, I want to do that so I did it? I like that. 
I want to highlight that. If, again, if you didn't need it to survive, there's only a few things we need to survive. Everything else is just, you know, it's extra in my book. So what you'll find, and I find this with anybody who's courageous enough to try it out, print out those statements, and let's get that highlighter, and let's, we're going to find some money. And what we're going to do during the activity, we're going to laugh a lot. And we're going to laugh because it's telling the story or the story is being revealed to you. It's, it's you that's on this paper. You, <laughs> Unless there was some identity theft, <laughs> it was you. And you laugh. <laughs> you got to laugh because you're like, that was me. But when I can get somebody to do this and then they laugh, and you're going to laugh in the, in the when you go three months back, you're going to laugh in, in the third month. And I'm like, we still got two more to do. But you're going to laugh at yourself and you're going to say, there, there go that extra money you could have saved. You could have invested. You could have done that. And you said you, you said money was a little tight. I don't know. The paper showed me that was another couple hundred dollars there. And I found people to do this who were on a limited income. Mm-hmm. I've seen it. I, I have never lost a bet. I will find at least a hundred dollars. At least. If I do more, I have never lost this bet. If I can get somebody to sit down and do this activity. Now, the, the thing about this, <clears throat> you cannot take the shortcut. Because the shortcut is, oh, I'll pull it up online. I'll look at it on my phone. No, mm-mm. I want to go old school because I love technology mm-hmm. like the next person. But the reason we are not getting where we need to be from a financial literacy perspective or you know, closing the wealth gap or however you want to quantify and classify what I'm trying to do here is because we're getting away from the tried and true. If <laughs> you can look at your spending and be able to declare what was a want and a need, you are doing some incredible things because some people cannot figure out the difference between the two. Oh. Heard it. Oh, I need these shoes. Do you? You got 20 pair. You can only wear one at a time. <laughs> I'm not saying I don't want you to look fly, but can we like figure out how, how much flyness do you need? Because this, you're looking fly, but you, your bank account look a little light. But but it's but what it does, y'all. I'm telling you, this this activity, it works. It, again, hands down, it has worked better than me doing a budget session or a money management session and then giving you a template or my spreadsheet because nobody does it. <laughs> or I should say, people rarely do it. But I start off by showing this or sharing this activity because you don't even need somebody like me to do this. And so when people who are on, on, you know, if you're on a limited budget and maybe you can't afford to, to pay for the help, help just showed up right here on your doorstep. It showed up tonight here on a Monday. And, and for all of you who are in attendance, share this with that friend who you know needs to be doing better with their money. Just see if they'll do it. Because if they don't, don't worry about trying to help them. They're not ready. I don't try to force this down upon anybody. You want more clarity around your spending? Try mm-hmm. this activity. And then call us back or email email O'Kerr and say, man, Jasper told me about this once challenge. And let me tell you how much I found. <laughs> I'm telling you, at least $100. At least. All right. So I'm going to pause it for a second. Any, um, again, I try to do these little check-ins. We're still really good on time. Um, and I haven't even <laughs> been watching the chat, but Simone and Charlie, has anything popped up in the chat uh, since, since we've been... Uh, I've been kind of on a roll. So my apologies if I've missed something in the chat. No, no questions, just so, uh, comments and things from people. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. All right. Um, so yeah, we're still, we are we're doing really good on time. So Hi, I, I sort of have a question. Okay. So, right ahead. Um, so I've planned a couple of trips this year. And when you look at what you actually need and what you want, um, I'm thinking about what what is the balance for that? Because a a trip sometimes like, you know, a cruise or something um, once a year, it it almost seems like a necessity if you're doing like that whole nine to five grind thing and getting like a day and a half off every five days. So how would you classify that? Like a trip or just a need to reset and get some enjoyment out of life beyond that. Yeah, uh, I think it's mandatory. <clears throat> okay, thank you. I feel better already. Yeah. So look, y'all, look, look, look. if y'all can't, like, I, I, I am not, like, you cannot save it all. You cannot invest it all. 
the problem that I'm running into with most people is getting them to see that we can do it all. <laughs> That's the difference. So, so I know you need. I know you need a mental break. Yeah. From, from your job, from your kids, from, mm-hmm. like, you need to go hang out and enjoy yourself because you, you'll burn out, you'll be stressed. You'll yes, but there is something to say about you plan your fun. Mm-hmm. So just like you can plan that that cruise or whatever type of vacations you all want to go on, mm-hmm. you want a little bit of that energy with your savings and your investments and your retirement, and your insurances, and I just I'll keep going down the list, but I, I want you to give a little bit more love to those things because I look I look at it from this kind of lens. <clears throat> I'm in the financial space. So like I'm, I'm staying in my lane, but I know people from an overall health perspective, you need to have your money right. So there's financial concerns and wellness. There is mm-hmm. mental health, <laughs> mental wellness. So you need that trip. You need to go out with your friends. I, I didn't need to go to that Warriors game. I wanted to. <laughs> we had a great time, but you need the mental wellness or health. Mm-hmm. And then there's the physical. And if one of those three is off, mm-hmm. like we kind of know we gotta make some improvements. Because <clears throat> yeah. everybody who says, well, I'm gonna work all, I'm gonna work all the time. Well, hopefully you live long enough because you might <laughs> work yourself into the grave. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. There comes a time when, you know, I'm 60 now, you know, and I don't want to spend the rest of my life doing nine to five and barely getting a day and a half on the weekend. I want to enjoy it before it's gone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, and let's bottle up what you just said and let's go do the work. Because that is what I hear people say. And then when I show up and say, hey, let's let's work on these activities. It's crickets. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, well, they just lying to me. They, they want to say something to be on camera, to be on the like, what, <laughs> like people, are like who? You ain't got a lot of me because all, all I gotta do is ask you a few questions about your goals, where you're trying to go, what you're trying to accomplish, and then let's say we don't decide to work together. I still might check up on you in six months or a year and say how's it going. And when you don't respond to me, I got my <laughs> mm-hmm. because at one point I have lost some weight. And as I was losing weight, I wanted to tell everybody. Mm-hmm. When you ain't doing right, you ain't trying to tell nobody. Nope. <laughs> so, <laughs> when we put it out in the universe that we want to do better financially, that's great because I think that's that's a that's a big step in planning. You've told the universe you want to do better. You've told your financial planner, somebody like me, what you're trying to accomplish. Great. Now, how are we gonna get you there? And are you willing to do the work? I just want to see us do the work. I, I agree with you, uh, a- Andrea or Andrea. I agree with you a thousand percent that you need to go have some fun. But if we're having too much fun to our detriment, well, I guess you have a good story to tell. I'm not. I'm not having too much fun. I'm working. <laughs> yeah, I, lo- I love the honesty that I get from these sessions because like we're all human and I, I think no matter where we are we're all kind of dealing with the same kind of like handful of issues it's just really how do we handle them that's the difference maker like when people like when you talk to wealthy people like they're not the smartest some of them have you know they got degrees some of them got street smart some of them are business savvy yeah some people got lucky and they, they were born into a good situation but when you listen to them talk you're like you have said nothing mm. I see him just like, are they going to say something that's like earth shattering and like, is really going to be a game? Because I haven't heard anything yet. And I've had to learn the same thing when I do my sessions, like even tonight, where I may not have said anything yet. But you're like, we, we already knew that. But maybe it's the way I'm delivering the message that gets you to move or that helps your friend who you're going to tell about this session, right? It's, it's maybe it's in the delivery of who is telling us or sharing with us this information. So that was a part of my uh, obsession with staying in the financial services industry because I'm, I'm well aware that, you know, there aren't uh, heavy numbers when you look at who's giving out the advice, whether mm-hmm. it's banks, insurance companies, investment firms, n- the majority isn't black and brown faces. <laughs> mm-hmm. So if my people 
that black and brown people don't don't trust the folks who are there right now. I got at least kind of I got to try. So I mean that's what I, I think I get out of doing these sessions, and I'm, I'm glad that occur. They keep bringing me back, so I haven't messed up yet, y'all. I'm trying to I'm trying to stay on the <laughs> camera, but like they keep bringing me back because all we're doing is having a real discussion with the community that I really understand because I, I get it, but I try to keep showing up and providing resources and and having these discussions because again, maybe one of you takes it and runs with it. Mm -hmm. and like, man, it's, it's something hit, some hit right, and and maybe today was the day. And, and even if you're not ready today, that's okay. That's okay. But at least take good notes and think about where you want to go. And and so you know, getting back to this budgeting piece. So the the once challenge is an idea <clears throat> that you all should consider using. Uh, budgeting made easy. I'll got a couple of animations on here, but this was the. Um, the 50-20-30 is a popular budgeting strategy, or some, some say 50-30-20. In my diagram, is 50-20-30. Same difference. But in the essence of time, I'll kind of just roll through these very quickly so you can see them. But when I talked about, like, there's only a few things that we actually need, well, those are the essentials. Like, we got to eat. Whether you go to the grocery store, whether you're ordering your food, whether you farm your own food or... You got to eat. So, so I'm okay with like that expense, whether it's, again, if you're eating out, but you're not eating leftovers, I got a problem with that. Why are you ordering so much? Because I love mm. leftovers. So lefto leftovers, get. <laughs> I got some leftovers at night when I get off this session. That, that I'm going to hit that fridge up. My wife, not so much. So I've learned that if we order a little bit more, I don't have to order as much if we go out because I know she can order enough to have leftovers that I get to eat. Y'all see how that works? Simple. Yeah. I mean, I'm making it sound simple, but it, it just, you got to understand that, right? So shelter, whether you rent or own, I need you to have a roof over your head. Because if not, you got a bigger issue than your money. You need to find a roof. I mean, I mean, we got to think about our priorities, right? Like I got to do some things and then other things are just optional. But I, shelter is important. Transportation, right? So am I, look, everybody got two feet. And if you don't, I'm not, no, no, no jokes here. But again, we got, we can walk, we can ride a bike. We got scooters out there. We got public transportation. Just whatever you need to get around, but we've we've got to get around somehow, some way. Like as the weather gets better and it gets darker later, like I love riding my bike. And people are like, why do you ride your bike? I'm like, because I like fresh air and getting exercise. I get mm -hmm. a two for one. <laughs> Leg power, exercise. I mean, I got to pack another change of clothes down. You know, I'm going to sweat out whatever shirt I'm riding my bike with. But, you know, think about your transportation costs. Like I, I've met people live in the same neighborhood, work in the same general area, and they won't carpool. Hmm. Now, I need my me time in the morning. Okay, great. Me time with all that gas money you got to pay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm telling you, the stuff people tell me, I'm like, what's it worth to you? And, and the thing I want, I want to stress to everybody is none of this stuff is permanent. Like I haven't said that you got to do this stuff forever. I just want to get you to a level where we're starting to see the progress. Mm -hmm. So you understand your spending and the wants and needs, but now you you have a game plan or a strategy as to how you're going to attack. And so that last in the essentials is your utilities. So wherever you are, you know, hopefully you got running water, you know, electricity, PG and E. You know, maybe it's the sewage and uh, you know, garbage. But you know, there's always it's your, it's your I throw your phone bill and then your internet. Like I throw those utilities. Like we all kind of, we need we need those. Those are necessities. Mm -hmm. And so the 50% is just kind of a, a, a rule of thumb. People have said to me, well, Jasper, it's, I mean, 50% on just those. I mean, we live in the Bay Area. And I was like, how far you want to go with this? Because I, I will I will share a story with you. Uh, yes, ma'am. Go right out. See your hand. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Um, just about under uh, essentials. Don't you put clothing under essentials or did you put it under financials as an investment, depending on where you work and what kind of clothes you have to buy to work? No, nah, clothing is optional. No, nah, clothing is optional. Ain't got clothing. I beg your pardon? I'm just I'm just, <laughs> I'm just I, No, I, I'm serious. I mean, between no, no, no. I, I wearing the, something in a 20 degree situation or like we had rain yeah, a couple of weeks yeah. ago versus having an investment in your clothing because you have a certain position you occupy 
So yeah. you have to dress a certain way is what I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, not to. Do you exactly. put it under the investment part or do you put it back under the essentials? So I leave this to the individual. And here, here's what I'll say. Clothing yeah. is usually not a month by month type of bill. Mm -hmm. for, for Some people do shop every month. I generally throw it into the lifestyle because once you've decided or wherever you work, how you work, you've generally purchased enough stuff to kind of sustain yourself from a, 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 a basic or fundamental level from clothing. Okay. But I don't see people generally spending money on clothes every month unless they're into fashion. So I don't, I know it isn't essential for us to need clothing, but that's usually mm -hmm. going to be a one-time cost. And so again, this, oh. isn't, the, this isn't the super uh, itemized detailed budget and that's on purpose. So I appreciate the question because Clothes always comes up. The other one is children. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll say this as a disclaimer, just, just so y'all know, the first time I said this, I got in trouble. I mean, we laughed about it, but <laughs> so bad. At a point in my life, I just kind of said stuff without thinking, but I was in a workshop and this, this, this woman was sitting in the front row and she said, well, my, my son goes to this private school with language immersion, they travel. And, and for the life of me, I know I shouldn't have said it, y'all, but I was like, you didn't have to have a kid, did you? I mean, and everybody was, oh. I mean, oh. she was a good, we, we had already had a good, like, I, I had fun with my session, so I had already kind of built up enough of, like, she, oh. she didn't take offense to it. She kind of laughed. She was like, that was wrong. But I was like, I know that <laughs> having children is a lifestyle choice, and I know there's not going that dark on this session, but she wanted to have a child, right? And yeah. so the point I wanted to make, I shouldn't have said it the way I said it, but I was like, we can't use some of these things as crutches because the child is here. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand that I have a lot of friends who don't want to have kids. They all have fur babies. Very clear. I don't want to have kids. So they don't. So I wanted to have kids. I have one right now. We'll get to work on the second one later. But like, I, so I understand that my lifestyle involves me having more expenses because there's another human we got to care for. But I've heard too many times of people using that as the crutch as to why they can't do something different. Mm -hmm. And so the clothes, again, I'll let, I'll let you decide where you want to throw that into your framework. Again, I use this as a baseline. But wherever you think you need to put clothing, by all means, you add it in there. Add it in there. Mm -hmm. So essentials, though, I think from simplicity's sake, because again, the, the budget template I show what two slides back that intimidates people, and just the the the, the thinking, right? So we we talk about I've tried to budget and it didn't work. So now you're thinking about all those feelings and you sitting there with that itemized list. You're like, oh, ooh, there's too many boxes. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we don't do it. So I intentionally love, and I use this one too. This is the 50, 20, 30 help me because the person I'm talking about, I'm talking about myself. Like I couldn't do that itemized budget and I'm a financial planner. And so wow. I had clients doing it and they would struggle. And in my mind, I was like, man, someday I got to stop living this lie. And I did, it took like mm -hmm. a year or two because I was just selling. I wasn't thinking about like the, the, the behavior behind why the client wasn't doing it and I had one of my good buddies he's one of my clients he was an engineer he did it like <laughs> it was easy for him yeah he did the budget for six months I was like I needed the just a month but <laughs> but again his the way he thinks this is easy and fun and I need to know mm -hmm. that isn't the majority of us and, and so again I, I wanted to kind of I don't, I never like saying dumb things down. I just want to make things simple enough to where if it's simple enough and easy, maybe you'll give it a shot. Mm -hmm. so, so with our, our financials, there, there's five categories, but even that scared people when I used to first show this, they would say, man, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't got that much, man. I'm, I'm going to do all of these. And I said, well, look, maybe we can't do all of them, but the mm -hmm. first two that are listed are listed in that order on purpose. Yeah. I need you to think of yourself and pay yourself first. If you can, you can do a dollar. Great. Do it. You save. That's better than the person who did zero debt. We all seem to have some. Let's figure out a strategy. We'll get you out of there. It's not going to be tomorrow. Unless you're going to win the lottery. Unless you get that <laughs> inheritance. Like I, just, I, mean, I'm, I like to be honest with people. Like, let's just, mm -hmm. let's see how bad it is. 
because you think it's bad, uh, it's probably somebody who's got it worse. But we got to address it. And then insurance, again, there's a whole lot that falls under insurance. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe your job, if you are employed, is offering you some of those insurance benefits. And then there are others you're going to have to do on your own. Right. Retirement, kind of the same. A lot of people I've encountered, maybe they've only done retirement accounts because their job provided that opportunity. But let's say you're not working or the job didn't provide it. You kind of left on your own to do it. But again, there are options that you can look at doing. And then for investments, I look at investing in yourself. So maybe that's getting uh, some additional education. Maybe that's a degree. Maybe that's a, a certificate. That's an investment. But normally that's going to be kind of that double-edged sword where it's like, maybe I got to borrow some money to invest in myself <laughs> to get that piece of paper. But that's okay. You still are expecting a return on that investment. So that's an investment. I think of investing in the stock market that's, I'll say, non-retirement based. So a different type of investment account. I think of mm -hmm. investing in real estate. I think of investing in businesses. So that's how I define investments. However, when looking at your overall income or income streams that you might have, maybe we can only do the first two. Maybe I need some more insurance, but I can't afford to get it yet. But let me make sure I maximize my employee benefits. Same with retirement. Again, if you are offered a retirement plan through your employer, have you had a conversation with the investment counselor who's assigned to your plan? Every plan has them. While we don't take advantage of the meeting, I, I can't tell y'all why we don't call that person. That's <laughs> their job is to help you with that retirement account for your company. And uh -huh. I've heard this a thousand times. Yeah, I got this account. Yeah, I never called them. I never went online to look at their resources. And I'm like, it was free. Uh -huh. you, know, you were too busy to call them to uh -huh. let them know you needed some help on figuring out. And, I, and to this day, I still help a lot of people with their employer-sponsored retirement plan. And I'm like, you could have asked some of these basic questions of the person who's assigned to your account. Uh -huh. So... I know so, the oh, yes, ma'am. Go right ahead. Light under lifestyles. And uh, well, there were two things that you said. First, you said 50, 20, 30. Mm -hmm. And then you said 50, 30, 20. So if you have financials at 30% and lifestyle at 20%, what made the financials go up? Was it the investments or was it another category for the business or what? Nope. So when I first learned of this structure, it was 30% in financials. I uh -huh. tried that a few times, but I started thinking about human behavior. Okay. We are so accustomed to the lifestyle we live that it's almost foolish of me to think I'm going to get you to allocate more money to your financial stuff as opposed to dialing back your lifestyle. Yeah. And, and let me know if I'm wrong with this because I've, I've tried to test this over the years, but in my thinking, it's a little bit easier if I give myself a little more grace. And all I did was flip the numbers. I, that's all I did. Mm. I thought about how we process this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was like, so I got to tell somebody, <laughs> who loves whatever it is they love spending their money on, I got to tell them to stop that temporarily and mm -hmm. redirect some of that money elsewhere. I don't think I'm going to sell them on that. Mm -hmm. So maybe I got to take some baby steps. So for simplicity's sake, I like this framework because <clears throat> this was to um, Andrea's point earlier. I'm only asking people to really take this 70% uh -huh. very seriously. Like, like this is where I want you to focus. Mm -hmm. So in your mind, you still got 30% to live. Mm -hmm. That is why this spoke to me because I learned about this structure when I was 20, 22. Mm -hmm. I was already in financial services, giving out these, these budget templates that, that I wasn't doing, that my clients weren't doing. <laughs> and, and so I was like, and all I do, I just kept doing research. And I was like, gotta be a better way. Mm -hmm. Gotta be a better way. And th this, isn't, this isn't for everybody. Like, some, like this is too simple for some people because they're gonna oh. think about all the other bills and then they're going to try to figure out, well, how do I get them to fit in one of these three? Make them fit. It's yours. This isn't a Jasper 50, 20, 30. This, is, this isn't trademark. I can't even find out who created it. Mm -hmm. Like 
I did the research to try to see who I still to this day don't know who was the first. I saw a lot of people talking about it. But I never mm-hmm. said, oh, they such and such got credit for, for being the first. Maybe somebody touts that today. I don't even care at this point. It works because it was simple. Because in your mind, all you thinking to yourself, I got 70% to focus on. I still can live. Mm-hmm. So I can take that vacation. I can go shopping, go to that playoff game and not feel guilty because I've already mm-hmm. taken care of all my other responsibilities. All it does is it frees you up a little bit. Mm-hmm. It frees yeah. you up to move forward. It frees you up to make progress. Now, remember that little kid that I showed in the first budgeting slide? See, we'll, mm-hmm. we'll stop feeling that way once we make a commitment to something like this or doing the once challenge. Again, I don't know what strategy is going to hit for you. I just don't know that. I don't know you all well enough at this point. Actually, I know one who loves budgeting. So this is just extra <laughs> stuff for her. <laughs> so, but, but again, I mean, this is the kind of stuff that people are like, if this is too challenging, let, I, 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 I will keep trying. I will keep trying to share more opportunities and strategies and just ask that you try one, you try another one, give yourself a ton of grace because even when I first started with this, Mm-hmm. my essentials was 63%. I didn't even Ooh. do the rest of the activity. I was like, woo, something got to change. And y'all know what changed for me? I literally started looking at my food bill because I was like, I got some control over that. The rent, I couldn't do nothing about the rent. So I was like, I, I'm not worried about stuff I can't control or influence. But that food, mm-hmm. oh, that was all me. And I started thinking about my grocery store trips. Mm-hmm. I didn't make a list, but I was like, well, it's in my head. And I would walk up and down every aisle. Oh, 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 oh. everybody does that. You don't make the list. And then you tell yourself, oh, I'm going to do it right without making the list. No, yeah. you're going to fail more times than not. Make the list. Even if it's a short run. Like if I know we got, if we're, if we're doing a, if it's like a holiday thing and you're making your favorite dish and you know exactly what you need, like literally run in the store, grab those things and walk out. Don't think mm-hmm. about well, I got to get some stuff for the week. No, 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 no. You came in there with one objective. <laughs> the ingredients for that dish. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, you might buy one more small thing that was $2 or $3. And that's great. And you're like, it wasn't much, but add that up over the course of a year. Yeah. So Daryl mentioned those 26 weeks. Yeah, add that up over 20. Keep doing that every if you shop every week. Just add, add it up. $3 here, $2 here. And, and that's the kind of stuff that if we don't take the time to do the work, we'll never know. Mm-hmm. So if you hate budgeting, if you despise it, it's still worth taking a look. It's still, it's still worth it. Because mm-hmm. I, I have gone through the same struggles. I go through the struggles now. I'm married with a kid. So Lord knows we got to talk about it a little bit more. So I, I got to consult with somebody. And when the other one, the little one can start talking, I got, I got to consult with two more people. Yeah. Charla, go ahead. Hop in, Charla, go right ahead. Hi, um, I wanted to just kind of back up a little bit to the grocery shopping. Um, that's my biggest challenge, literally grocery shopping. I make very specific lists each and every time. Mm-hmm. And I do go up and down the aisles instead of going for everything else, because I know in my mind, I'm going to see something that I forgot to put on the list. Mm-hmm. So should I pad my expense to cover those items, knowing that I'm going to forget something that should be on the list, rather than to bring my things back and say, dang it, I didn't have enough money for that? Because I try to pay cash every time I go grocery shopping now to keep me from using a card, mm-hmm. debit card or otherwise. Um, but I haven't been able to find the right strategy to deal with the loss of memory <laughs> when I say, oh, I forgot I need to have that or light bulbs or whatever. Um, so what is your suggestion for that? Um, I think you can be a little flexible, honestly. I, I think if you, I think because you are already aware of what you're doing, it's trying to figure out like what commitment can you make to yourself long-term that's going to put you in the best possible position. Like, I think that's where you want to get right. So you got the makings of doing it right. And you know what it's like to do it the right way 
And again, we're human. So, you know, you give yourself that grace, but thinking to yourself, if I was trying to be perfect, what things would I need to put in place to ensure that I never slip up? Uh huh. That might be the trick. Maybe. But you got to commit to it. So whatever it is you're going to commit to doing to say, hey, this is going to help me to not, you know, slip up. Will you do it? And if you're courageous enough, tell somebody else close to you to follow up and hold you accountable. Like, I think sometimes if people just have to answer to somebody else, I think we would do a lot better because you always going to you're going to want to give that positive report. So we got to have somebody that sometimes maybe hold us accountable. That might also help us help us move forward. Yes, ma'am. See, we got another hand go right ahead. Oh, is that me? Yes, ma'am. Yep. Okay. Um, <laughs> on the transportation thing, mm -hmm. I have been, uh, I don't have a car now. I, I sold both the cars that I had, my mom's car and my car. Mm -hmm. And that went well, except that the transportation in the neighborhood and in the city where I live has been plummeting, which means that not only am I spending more time standing around waiting for buses and or the train, I'm also uh, not using time effectively because in in the new the normal thing, time is money. Uh, so sometimes I would go and rent a car because I had to be able to maximize the five minutes that I would normally wait or the 20 minutes that I would normally wait for a public vehicle to show up. What I'm asking is, um, I was trying to use my version of budgeting, uh, you, which kind of goes with your financials 20%. I mean, yeah, it goes with your essentials 50% because the time money quotient started to outweigh the gas expense and the insurance expense that I was giving to the rental agency. So then I started looking at the insurance expense if I carried my own insurance uh, versus, but since I didn't have a car, it didn't make sense for me to get car insurance when I just needed to use it you know, like one day out of a month or two or three days out of a month. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I think even what you're describing, that's life, y'all. I mean, I think what you're describing, oh, is okay. life, that, that is a real life example. And it, it's similar to what happened to me when I first did the 50, 20, 30, where I moved. <laughs> oh, okay. Like, I mean, you. so you have got to be willing to make some very, I don't want to say that you got to be able to make some decisions. I'll just say, I'll just call them decisions. Uh -huh. And you've got to stand on that decision because you know that if you do it, good things are going to happen. Like a lot of people have told me they will not move because they want their freedom. Like I love my own place and this, I'm like, great. And you can't afford it, but yet, yeah. You don't want a roommate? Again, you tell me what you won't do, which could probably help you. And that's yeah. what I struggle with as a as a practitioner is right. people tell me exactly what they won't do. And then I'll say, so how are we going to get there then? Mm -hmm. And I just sit back and, and listen. And usually it's, well, I don't know. I don't know either because you're not trying to do <laughs> what I'm recommending. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I looked at, my sh my rent bill and i literally thought to myself how how valuable has living on my own been to me and i thought about, I, I did like a, a list i was like you know, like the little t-chart pros and cons mm -hmm. wrote down the pros but the con list wasn't that long except the very first thing that i wrote was i could save six hundred dollars a month if i just moved Mm. again all the benefits of why i should stay living by myself the list i, I said the first <laughs> it saved 600 and i just said if i could get my rent down to like a thousand dollars which at the time the rent was going up to like 1500 and that was like in 2000 and 
eight or nine. So mm-hmm. I know that same apartment is probably like 2000 now, but you know, I had a friend and I love her to this day. Her daughter and I are rough the same age and her daughter had moved out the house back to the East coast. And so I said, do you want to inherit an adoptive son? <laughs> <laughs> And she was like, absolutely. And I said, I'm not even going to try to really negotiate because whatever you tell me that's less than this, what's about to be 1500, I'm sold. Like I would love a thousand. And she was like, yo, just give me 900. I said, and to this day, I, and Sherry know I've told this story about Sherry. I love Sherry to death. I mean, Sherry, we're, we're family. And mm-hmm. I moved because she had a four bedroom house. <sighs> and I was like, Sherry, your daughter just left. And I was just you and your cats. Now, I'm not allergic to cats, but I was like, man, 900 and I could rent a room and, you know, I clean and cook. I mean, I, I was selling her on why I needed this 900. <laughs> so, yeah. So, but I'm telling you, you you've got to be willing to do something different. And if you're not, don't expect different results. We talk about insanity, right? Doing the same thing, expecting, mm-hmm. expecting different results. A lot of us are just insane. And I don't, I don't mean that as a slight, just your way of thinking mm-hmm. is insane. Like th- this process of I'm going to do better financially, but I'm not willing to make the changes. Tell me how this works. And we're not talking about something on TV because only on TV, okay. only on TV, that kind of magic works. I live in reality. <laughs> yes, sir, Daryl. Go, go ahead, Daryl. Yeah, I was just going to say thank you so much for your training tonight. And I definitely want to talk with you about coaching. Um, this was a fight for me because we went with that, um, what's his name? Uh, zero base budget, nothing's yeah. left. You need to put it all in envelopes. So I was, that, was, that was the last one. Yeah, Ramsey. <laughs> yeah, oh. Dave Ramsey. So I, I, I really appreciate my wife because I had to yield because I'm the mm. impulsive spender mm. and budgeting is a hobby to her. I love it. I mean, every month she's got this calendar she watches videos on him and his videos all over youtube about it so i love it but i must admit something to you i hate having an allowance every week i can't spend more than my allowance and it's crazy but you know what it's what you got to do to stay on a tight budget daryl look i'm glad you said that so so really quick there thank you for sh- sharing that because what you have is a system that works so whatever financial gurus people follow they they like that guru or that influencer if what they have shared with them works for them. If it didn't work, they don't speak of them that, that they're not highly faith. They don't speak about them. It, they just don't talk about it if it don't work. If it the systems are great, y'all. There there mm-hmm. isn't some new like overly new creative innovative budgeting is boring and dry. And again, Daryl got lucky that he's with somebody. <laughs> who enjoys this. And the allowance thing is funny because I laugh. I have a client, they, they do the same thing. It, it's a husband and wife, they have two daughters and the wife makes more than the husband, but the husband is better with the finances. And mm. it was crazy that they both worked in banking or yeah, they're both mm. in financial services. But here's what he said. And here's what the wife said. She said, I know I make more than him, but I'm the spender. I said, Lord knows people can't even admit that to the person they live with. But she was <laughs> to admit that they're married, two kids. She said, but for us to take care of this house, I mm-hmm. got to let him do the work. So just like in Daryl's situation, he is allowing his partner to do the heavy lifting for him. And so when my mm-hmm. client, she was like, yeah, I make more. But I get a, 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 an allowance it, that's reasonable that we have negotiated, we've discussed, it fluctuates, mm-hmm. but it works. So a system, as long as it works for you, it's a good system. I don't care whose name is on it, who's mm-hmm. promoting it, but if the system is effective and it gets you results, it is a good system. And I've heard the Dave Ramseys, the Susie Ormans, the Kiyosakis, and all the other famous people who have incredible brands. I've heard people go through their programs and I'm like, did it work? And they're like, some yes, some no. I'm like, great. Mm-hmm. So just mm-hmm. find the program that works or the, the person or the, the book or just whatever you're going to need. And, and so as Daryl was kind of saying here, as, as we kind of wrap up, we're slightly over seven o'clock, but these are some other budgeting strategies that were, were, that were popularized <clears throat> and really quickly zero-based budget means every dollar is accounted for. So mm-hmm. normally, again, my industry, you did a budget, you're like, oh, do you have a surplus or a deficit? And ideally, the deficit isn't good if you have more month than money, not mm-hmm. a good thing. But 
if you say you had a surplus, that's not good because that could have been money you should have saved, pay some debt off with, put into your retirement account, whatever. There was something else you should have spent it on some fun, but you should be zeroing out everything. And again, that works for Oh, some really? People. Yeah, that, that is a, there are a lot of people who love zero base. You having a surplus is not a good thing. That means, again, you could have saved more, you could have spent more, you could have invested more. You, you didn't account for every dollar. Some oh. people love it. Some people don't like it. Some people like having the surplus because it makes them feel better, right? Remember those emotions? I feel better if I got a little extra. Where is that little extra going? Savings. There you go. That, that's... It's that's not that you don't have the extra money. It's just that you already have a plan for every extra dollar that hits your hand. That's it. And, that, and that's why it works. And all that, it, oh, it, it, again, in your thinking, every dollar has gone, every dollar has a job description every month. There is mm. not a dollar that's left on the side in the cold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every dollar got in your car and rode out with you for the month and you dropped that dollar off someplace. Mm -hmm. It works. It's a great strategy. Uh, envelopes. So envelopes is old school, but they're, they're like apps now that have like, they've um, digitized the envelope system, but it's old school. You can have envelopes and you literally write on the envelope what the money is for and you put in cash. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like somebody's grandma applied did this auntie. That's like, right. Don't, don't school, knock it. <laughs> and it works. And, and even if you don't yeah. do it for the entire budget, the envelope system was very good for mm -hmm. the folks who struggle with the lifestyle stuff where you're like, I have so much fun to my detriment. And so you, you, you kind of need to shift and actually physically put cash in the envelope and say, look, here's my fun money. Here's my going out to eat money. Here's my men going out to drinks with my friends money. And just you write it on the envelope, whatever that money's spent for. And as soon as that envelope gets empty, guess mm -hmm. what? No more fun for you this month. And so if you, <laughs> if you don't stretch out that money and plan and think more about where you're spending, it's happening. Guess you're going to be sitting in the house. That's mm. fine. S sitting in the house saves you money, y'all. Hopefully, hopefully you're not online shopping and doing <laughs> anyway. Envelopes, great system that has worked for a lot of people. This last one, and there's some others aside from just the ones I've shared tonight. Uh, this priority or value based is mm -hmm. really indicative on what you value or prioritize in your life. It, it, it kind of leaves you more in the driver's seat around you make the list and then allocate your budget as such. Mm -hmm. So if you value having fun first before you save your money, well, fun's probably number one on that list because you value or prioritize fun over saving, over investing, over thinking about retirement. So there are a lot of different strategies out there. And, and again, I'm going to say it again, just you've got to find the budgeting strategy that works for you. And as you're going through this process, because it's going to be a process, you're not going to wake up tomorrow and be a budgeting guru. Not going to happen. Didn't mm -hmm. happen to me. Took me. Took me a few months to get it together personally. Then I was even, I was an even better financial planner when I was engaging with my clients because now I was living it. It wasn't just like lip service. It wasn't theory. It was like, mm -hmm. oh, I've done this. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, this becomes second nature. And it sounds, that's kind of like, like the life that Daryl's living, where it just, it just kind of happens. And Daryl has accepted it. He is okay with it. Again, the mm -hmm. allowance piece, we're okay with that. You know, it sounds like it's, it's working. Something is working in Daryl's household, y'all. Don't y'all want some of that energy that it just works? <laughs> yeah. We don't care how it's written out because it's for you. You've got to be the one that enjoys it, that likes it, that understands why it's important. But if you're getting the results and you got a good system, stick with it. All right, I'm going to stop here, Sharon. That is the end of the slide deck. I'm going to do a thank quick. You. Yeah, you got I'm going to do a quick. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to do a mm -hmm. quick, quick poll here to kind of close it out. This is a, an easier one here I'll do for you. I'm going to stop sharing this. Can I ask just a you to reiterate a couple of things for me that I missed somehow. Absolutely. Do you mind? Let me let me launch the poll really quick. Okay. And I'll you, yeah. You you go Thank ahead. You. And the poll. Okay. This last poll is <laughs> it's a, a couple three, three 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 in three out. Um, All right. But yeah, absolutely. You can. Um, I'll take you first with the questions. So feel free once you have answered these questions, feel free just to chime on right in, and we can. We got a good twenty minutes left to just kind of open it up. So a couple questions as we close out tonight's session. 
Yeah, just you know, just uh. I got a quick question. Um, I'm not going to be able to save enough through retirement systems and different things to retire. So I've resolved that I'm going to have to do it through real estate. Mm. Um, I'd like to check in with you maybe on strategies and ideas. Uh, I'm already working on trying to get my credit scores up, but I definitely want to do some flips in the Bay Area because there's a lot of upside on property if we can get the right ones. Um, do you have any ideas or strategies on that before we're done with this series, or is that something we do after this series? Uh, we could talk offline, Daryl. I mean, real estate isn't my jam. You know, I, I, again, I stay in my lane with, I'll say, more of the securities markets. I mean, real estate is a, a great uh, asset class. Um, I always push back a little bit with people to see. Uh, it sounds like you probably have done a retirement analysis of some sort. I would just want to kind of confirm that to say what is possible with where you are right now. Even if you still decide to do the real estate, that's fine. Uh, I, I just have some more questions about like, why is it that real estate is going to be the answer? And let's, we'll, we'll talk for sure. We'll talk that. offline. I'm just looking yeah, at the we'll clock talk. and I'm 57 and I don't see it happening in the next eight years. So real estate plus maybe some retirement. Mm -hmm. We're, we're going to talk. We're going to talk. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk. And, um, and just for everybody, that was a great question too, Daryl. I mean, that's, I love talking through all the possibilities and not just, well, one thing is going to make or break me. Let's just see what's possible. And as long as you're open to going through that process, like that is like, that's planning to me, y'all. Like that's, that's, you can call it coaching, call, you can call, call it whatever, but we're going through a process to just see. So uh, really quick and I'll come back. We're going to open this up. So the, the three poll quote we've got, yeah, just about everybody's done it here. Uh, first question is, you know, did you learn at least one new thing from tonight's session? I usually kind of start the sessions with that. Uh, I kind of mm -hmm. like asking it at the end for those who stuck around where it's just like, did you learn at least one new thing? Uh, and if you didn't, you know, I would love to know what you didn't learn. Like, yeah, just like, I, I'm always curious. So um, yeah, no, no problem there. Uh, the pay yourself first budget, was that one of the strategies? It wasn't. However, the pay yourself first mm. is a budgeting strategy. So that one, that one got most of us, <laughs> but uh, it, it isn't one of the ones that I mentioned, but it actually is a strategy. And all it does, it, it's literally, uh, you're making the decision to just say, I'm going to save something first. Yeah. That's it. It's not some magical budget strategy. It's more of a, a reminder to yourself that when you go through the budgeting process, you are always the first thing you list. Whether you're using an app, using paper, it doesn't, you are first. That's that's where that mm -hmm. one comes from. And the last one, uh, yeah, everybody got this one. Um, yeah, fill in the blank. I should give myself plenty of grace. Grace. That's it. Give yourself plenty of grace. Again, we're not, not overnight, y'all. We're not going to get this overnight. Don't try to get up. Now you're going to stress yourself out. <laughs> <laughs> Look, even after you log off tonight, you're probably like, man, this is a little heavy for me. Because maybe, maybe this is your topic where you're like, I needed to spend a little more time with this specific topic and sit with it. Like, we, it's Monday. I mean, we got two more sessions with me. You got a fourth session. I mean, this is going to be a lot to unpack. So, yeah. I mean, you want to give yourself some time and, and don't try to... Like just if you've taken some notes or have some thoughts as we've gone gone through tonight's session, just sit with it for a while. Like don't try to, if you need to do one small thing, that's okay tomorrow, but don't try to do a lot. Mm -hmm. Honestly, just you literally just wait till you get to through the entire series, and then you do maybe a, a, a an overall debrief of all the sessions. But you know maybe make make a few notes when you log off tonight and just say to yourself, okay, got a few things I'm gonna kind of put on the to-do list, but let me get ready for the next <laughs> three sessions. So, <laughs> you know, just take your time, take your steps. Don't, we're, we're not in a hurry. Hopefully not in a hurry. Let's just take a time. Um, all right. Um, Does have anybody time. have an example of a priority or a value-based budget? Because I'm not exactly sure how that would work or what it looks uh, like. I don't have a firm example. If you, I literally, if you type that into your search engine, it, they'll, it'll pop up. You type in value based or priority priority based, uh, it'll pop up. I don't know if they have. I, I know I read about them. 
I don't even know they have like really good examples aside from what I kind of mm-hmm. shared around it's it's the placement of how you structure your budget but they didn't have like examples when I was um initially doing my research on those yeah uh, let me see here but um I kind of thought of it as dovetailing with lifestyle in your lifestyle strategy thing, the 30% that you had. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, the lifestyle thing, I mean, it it will probably pull a lot of stuff out of that category because I think when you're going through an activity like like just budgeting in general, Mm -hmm. you just got to be honest with yourself. Like, you know... Hopefully you know what you're doing. <laughs> no. Now, if, you just, if you really have no recollection, then we got another issue. But most of us kind of know, and and I think that's what gives me the like it gives me hope mm-hmm. that you can do better. No matter how bad you tell me it is, the fact that I know we can make some small adjustments, but like you got to see it and believe it. And when you can like share that with somebody. Like that lets me know, like, all right, we got a chance. Okay. Well, I mean, the- we get it done, but at least I, I'm, I'm an optimist, so I always think we're gonna figure it out. I was I'm thinking gonna- about fr- uh, fraternity and sorority conventions and uh, professional conferences, and you know, um, academic scholarship drives with your churches and stuff like that. Does that would come under priority? or value-based, and, and I also thought of it as coming under um, your lifestyle thing, too, what you do about charities, charitable giving. Yeah, yes, I, I agree with that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I um, <laughs> yeah. I'm from North Carolina, so the, 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 the church thing, I, I've had that talk quite a bit. <laughs> I would say, list yourself first. They're like, no, you got to list the Lord first. I said, Okay, whoever the Lord, whoever you, whoever, whoever's on that <laughs> list, because again, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm not in the South anymore, but I, I'm, I'm very respectful of like whatever people believe in. But it was just like, I, it was almost like they were trying to pick a fight in the session. And I was like, y'all ain't getting me, not, not on that one. <laughs> There's certain topics you know gonna cause an issue. I said, whoever, whoever your savior is, and I learned how to say that very quickly. If they, they get they cut first, great. You mm-hmm. need to be second. How about that? And the lady was like, you right, brother. I was like, I'm just, I'm, I'm learning as I go too. But like, I've heard that, I heard that enough. I, I, I'm not going to knock where your money goes. I just need you to know where, I just need you to know. Where you put it. That's right. Yes, ma'am. So Jasper, I wanted to just um, clarify a couple of things because I missed them and I think they're important. You mentioned the once challenge. What's, what's the once challenge? So the once challenge is you print off the previous three months. Oh, okay. I got that then. I wrote that down. Yep. Um, and then the um, 50, 20, 30, what's that? Yep. So 50% is your essentials. Okay. 20% financials. All right. 30%, 30% is lifestyle. Thank you. You got it. Hey, Jasper. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. We're getting kind of close on our end time, and we have uh, we want to announce our winners oh, yeah. for tonight for the Build Wealth Challenge book. So um, let's do that real quickly, and I will announce the winners. Drum roll, please. Can you do a drum roll for me, Jasper? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Actually, I guess I should have gone out here to get it first. Okay. Uh, first winner is Jamila Wilson. Is Jamila still with us? Jamila's still here. Okay. Jamila. Okay. Uh, second winner is Benicia Khan. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. I think oh. J- she had hopped on for a little bit, Miss Wilson. Mm-hmm. Oh, and she, oh, okay, she's gone. Okay. Yeah, I'm here. Second person, Benicia Khan. I'm here, Jamila. Got it. 
Got you, Jamila. You oh, go okay, ahead. great. All right, congratulations, Jamila. You just won um, one of the Build Well Challenge booklets um, authored by Jasper Smith. Congratulations. Um, also, Benicia Cobb. I do see her name here. Yes, I'm here. Okay, congratulations, Benicia. You also won a copy of the Build Wealth Challenge. And our last winner for the night is Mary Allen. Mary, are you online with us? Yeah. Mary's still here. I see her name. Maybe she stepped away. Uh, but let's congratulate Mary, um, Jamila, and Benicia as our winners for the night. Um, the other thing I want to just check in with you, Jasper, real quick. Um, will you be sending or will you have ask um, Simone to send the template for the budget? Yeah. Yep. 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 Okay. Yeah. Perf. All right, everyone, you'll get those um, in the morning. And if you have any questions in our session tomorrow about the template um, in terms of filling it out and trying it yourself, um, Jasper can field those um, tomorrow when we meet again. Yeah. And then Simone okay. put a note in the chat <clears throat> for all the book winners, just drop drop your email in the chat or send it directly to Occur, because that's Simone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that way uh, we'll coordinate getting you a copy of the book. Right, absolutely. Or getting you your copy of absolutely um we want to appreciate and extend our thanks to for having all of you guys attend i hope you learn some valuable information um i learn every year there's there's not hasn't been one year that i haven't walked away with something different um oh um daryl i see you would like to buy a copy well maybe you know wait and see if um, you might be tomorrow's winner, we have winners um, every night um, through Thursday. So you never know, but uh, Jasper can also drop that um, in the chat for anyone that doesn't win, um, mm -hmm. how they can obtain a copy of the book. Well, Char okay. Charlie, let's make sure Daryl doesn't win because he wants to support. <laughs> <laughs> no, I see, I see, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's no crooked lottery here so right. we're no, gonna it's not, it's we're not. pick people at random it'll be fun i don't know so we got yeah you got two, two more okay um any other questions before um we end we've got about five so, minutes left yeah. any yeah. last quick questions just a statement this was awesome thank you so much both of you. oh great 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 we're yeah. thrilled we love hearing that kind of feedback yeah, and, and I'll, I'll say as, as we kind of, anybody got any last thoughts, comments, concerns, like tomorrow, we're going we're gonna to hop into credit. <laughs> okay. So I, I'll say um, I'm a little light on the deck because we usually have a lot of conversation. Like it's, we're going to have a good time though. We're going to have a good time talking about credit, but it, it is out of all the topics, it's always the one that gets the most engagement. I, I don't see why it won't happen again tomorrow. I'm just warning y'all. If it doesn't happen, great, but it has to this day, every time we do credit, it is the one that we get the most questions, the most engagement, but I love it because the session, the session goes through fairly quickly. Um, and we already know why credit, it, it, Oh, okay. credit is an issue. I'll just say that, but we're going to talk about it at length tomorrow. And so, if you're chatting, can you please mute so we can finish our last comments? Please mute yourself. So, oh, I'm sorry, Jasper. Also, yeah, you good. I was also going to say uh, if you know somebody who should be at this series, like have them come. Like, Again, I, I, I like the fact we had a lot of registrations, but, you know, we got a good 20 plus to, to come out tonight. And I'm thinking like, man, how many more? We're going for impact. Yeah, I mean, that's really why we're doing this. I mean, it's mm -hmm. really to, again, the reason we asked that question about the one thing, because there's a lot to unpack in all these sessions. But if, if you take that one thing and then you told a friend or your, your significant other or 
you're at the job tomorrow and you tell your coworker, you're just like, yeah, y'all, y'all heard this group, okay? <laughs> They're doing this series. I mean, and I know we're, we're gonna hopefully try to do some more of these, but you know, I have such a great time with these sessions because it is getting like we're doing the work. Like, you know, they talk about who people like, what they do and how they give back. This is part of my give back. Like, I love spending this time uh, with, with my community and trying to help people mm-hmm. figure out whatever it is that's in the way. Let's try to figure out how we're right. going to get around it. We can always bust through, but, you know, maybe we should just go around it. But I, I, I thoroughly enjoy these sessions and I appreciate, you know, all the dialogue tonight where it just wasn't me just kind of <laughs> getting through the slides. Because, again, I don't keep the heavy slide decks because I want to have a lot more engagement. There is a lot of information we need to kind of know. But again, I don't think this is going to be brand new information to most people who attend these sessions. But I just hope that the time is right this time around for you to kind of take it and run with it. So, yeah, I just I, I'm excited about the next couple of days. Um, I know you all are just in for a treat with with all this information and uh yeah if we if we got again if there's nothing else i mean we're not gonna keep y'all it's, it's, we got four minutes i'm willing to honor the four minutes but if there's nothing else i mean i, I will bid you all farewell till tomorrow uh looking forward to having you all back on and again bring bring that one person with you Glad to have more with us tomorrow and the next day and the next day uh, but with that uh yeah uh charlie anything else that we missed i think we got everything I- I just want to say same link, same time. See everyone tomorrow. Stay safe, be careful, and bring your questions. Um, be candid tomorrow. We expect a lot of questions from the audience in general. Everybody bring at least one question to ask. Put it in the chat, raise your hand, shout it out. At least one question, okay? All right, thank you again for attending.